Hi, in this video we're going to show you the basic hardware setup required to run the Dynertia free software and do some dyno testing. So first thing we'll do, we'll assume that you've got the USB of the hardware plugged in and the device powered up. So we'll go set up communications. This lets the computer know what port that we're communicating on. Okay, so it's found the Dynertia hardware. We'll do a quick little sensor check. So I'm going to rock the flywheel backwards and forwards in front of the sensor because the fly will have a magnet on it. Okay, we're receiving a speed signal, that's good. We have a weather station connected, so we'll also link that. Job done. Now these settings will be recorded now, so we won't have to do them again. So let's actually set up our hardware now from our hardware menu. This is where we tell it what type of dyno we have. Um, we're going to do an inertia dyno and an engine dyno. Maybe like a go-kart engine dyno. Now, first things we need to do, we need to tell the system the moment of inertia. So the inertia of our flywheel. That's easy. This little calculator. So our main flywheel, let's say it's a go-kart dyno. We've got a 600 millimeter flywheel. It's got a 50 millimeter shaft through the middle of it, and that flywheel is 45 millimeters thick. That has a moment of inertia of 4.49. So, through the middle, let's say that it's running on a shaft, a 50 millimeter diameter shaft, which will have a 0 millimeter inside diameter. Uh, let's say that shaft 600 millimeters long, very low inertia. We can pretty well ignore this. Let's say maybe we've got a disc brake on there as well. That's got say 150 millimeter diameter. Um, it's slid over the shaft, so let's say it's got a hole in the middle of it of 50 millimeters, and it's uh, five millimeters thick. Okay, so the total inertia of this basic Data entry here is 4.499. Great, so now we need to let them know the software that. So up the top here, Dynertia can take three different flywheels and you can actually change between them, but most dynos only have a single flywheel that they don't change. So if we press on number one, it will transfer that data across into the software. You'll also notice there's the density of the metal here. That so the drop down here, mild steel 7.85, pretty common. That's why that's our default. But you can change those values. So that's that. You can also save it. If you've done a lot of complicated um, measurement data here, you can save that as well. We won't bother. So there's our moment of inertia. It's been transferred across into the software. So the other thing we need to do, we can leave all this as default. All these settings are in default. If we wanted to actually have speed, even though it's an engine dyno, if we wanted to have like kilometers per hour, we can enter in here the distance that would be traveled by one rotation of the flywheel. So if it's a go-kart dyno, effectively the circumference of the tire of a go-kart, and that would mean that we'd be over to on the engine dyno have the equivalent in kilometers per hour. We can pretty well ignore the other settings. Sensor mass ratio, that just tells me we have one, one pulse of the sensor for one rotation of the flywheel. RPM speed options, we can leave this filtering alone, but this is the filtering that's applied to the Speedo or Taco to smooth it out. So we can adjust that if we wish. And for an engine dyno, we won't bother, but in another session, we'll discuss RPM inputs. We can get RPM for the engine directly, but we won't need to because we've got a lot of tricks that we can use to, to display that. Uh, in the general section, these here, we'll discuss these outputs and their function uh, in another video also. So for wiring of the system, there's also this handy little tool up here, which shows the pin out for the Donertia free hardware and how the connections are, so we can connect air fuel ratio meters and temperature sensors, etc. So effectively that's that. 
that's the hardware menu done. The other thing that we should check is the software menu. There's a lot of functions here. We, we'll just leave it default. A few things of importance, but graph smoothness. This adjusts how smooth our graph appears on the screen. So if we have little jitters or um, due to vibration or chain stretch or anything, we can filter it out with this. But this only applies to filtering to a test that's about to be run. You can't filter tests that have already been run, and that's important to remember. The other things that we should check is a few of the other settings. Display, it is capable of running two monitors. The second monitor is a great idea. We can show an additional five data traces on that and a whole new set of gauges. So in total, we can overlay 10 um, runs and compare them simultaneously if we have a second monitor connected. The graph screen, we'll come and discuss this in once again in another session when we're doing some testing. This is default shown here, which is fine. But one thing that is quite handy is this auto shift. What this means is if we tick this, when we do a test, it will go on the graph screen and the oldest graph will drop off. So we can have five graphs displayed at once on a single monitor. So when we do a test, it will put one on as the new test and then drop off the oldest one. So we always have the five most current um, tests showing on the screen. This here, if we have that selected, we can also choose to leave one of the, the, the graphs basically alone. So it can be a master graph. So all the other tests that we do, they'll continue to shift off the screen. So we always have the newest one, except for this trace set number four. That will stay fixed as a reference to compare all the other ones to. So they're pretty handy functions to be able to, to play with. Uh, here in system is where we do our weather correction. We basically choose either one of the international standards or none if you don't choose to correct the test for weather data. We can also reset our configuration here as well if we want to um, go back to default settings. We can leave all the run testing alone, although this is quite handy, the show large run summary. This is for if you're using the dyno at a, at a dis doing displays in front of the public. This shows a large screen showing maximum power, uh, maximum um, torque and the RPM that it was achieved at so that people can see it from a distance. So it's a large sort of display that we can, um, we can have pop up, but it slows down normal testing because it's another screen, so we'll remove that for now. Okay. All the other settings here have been left at default. Uh, we'll talk about the outputs. We have multiple outputs on Dynertia that can control fans, etc. We'll do that in a separate session. Um, other thing of probably of interest here, the last thing, and then we're, we're done with our setup, is metric imperial. It's a common question we get. Can we display foot pounds and horsepower, uh, not just kilowatts or newton meters? So this changes the software between metric and imperial units throughout the whole software. We can also have these shortcut and buttons allocated here. So page up and page down. So page up, we'll select it to start and stop a run. Page down. Uh, we can make it auto increment and save a run. These buttons are particularly handy, these shortcuts, because these buttons, page up and down, are available on one of those inexpensive page turners, those wireless remote control devices that you use for presenting PowerPoint presentations. So they're, they're an inexpensive way of adding remote control, but they're also handy shortcuts on the keyboard. So if I put the press the page up button, that will tell the software to start or stop a run. The page down button will auto increment the file name, save it and then close it. So for example, if I'm doing a test and I've called that test exhaust test, I then go and do another quick test with a slight change. I press the page down button and it will call the new one exhaust test one. 
save it and close it. If I do the test again, it will call it exhaust test two, save it and close it, and free, etc. So it automatically increments the name of the file so you no longer have to retype in a file name. It just allows very quick, efficient testing. So, okay, in run comments, we can have comments, you know, you may make notes about your modifications to the engine, and they, with this selection, can be transferred every time that you do a test, the text that you've entered will just be transferred across to save you uh, retyping it in. And you can also edit them afterwards. So even when you're not using the dyno, you can view a file and you can change the comments associated with it. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, we're pretty well ready to go off and do some testing. We can also here, I'll just show you two more little things here. We can go and we can enter our company details, etc., etc., for when we print. We can also add an image that will appear on the printouts as well. And we can set up automatic archiving, so it will automatically save all your files into a backup location. So there's quite a lot of functions and features here but um, we'll leave those for another day. But for now, that's what's required to get us up and running and doing some basic testing. So hopefully you'll join me for the next video and we'll learn more about using the uh, Dynosia free software. Thank you.